Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 15-4A, Intro to Rational Functions. Now hopefully you've seen rational functions before and you're okay with how to get started graphing them. You get to have your calculator, but you've got to be smarter than the calculator because there are times when it will just straight trip and not be able to handle what we throw at it. So what I'd like to cover today are three things that you need to think about when looking at rational functions. You need to think about when is the top equal to zero, when is the bottom equal to zero, and who wins in the battle of top versus bottom, numerator versus denominator. Okay, so let's talk about an example problem. If we have f of x equals x minus three over x minus four. So this is a rational function, and you know that rational functions are polynomials over polynomials. So there are several things that we need to think about when this happens. First of all, when does the top equal zero? Because any fraction with a zero in the numerator is gonna equal zero overall. So zero over three, zero over four, zero over a billion, they're all zero. So when does the top equal zero? So let's evaluate that, the top is when does the top equal zero? So that happens at three. So this tells me that the whole thing will be equal to zero at three. We're definitely gonna go through that point. Next up, let's see here. We wanna say when does the bottom equal zero? All right, so that means x minus four, when does that equal zero? That's gonna be at four. And what's gonna happen at four? What's gonna happen when the denominator, the bottom of the fraction, is equal to zero? Well, dividing by zero is undefined, so we're gonna have asymptotic behavior there. We're gonna have things that um, either shoot off to infinity or miss each other, negative and positive infinity. Something bad is gonna happen at four. So at four, we're gonna have a vertical asymptote. All right, this graph is starting to come together. And, well, let's see, I wanna know the y-intercept. I wanna know um, when, do, when x equals zero, which is a y-intercept, I wanna know when that happens. So that's gonna be, if I plug in zero, I get negative three over negative four, which is three-fourths. So before even one, there's gonna be another point on my graph. And I picked that one because it's easy to calculate, that plugging in zero is the easiest thing of all. You can just ignore all the terms with x in them. So that's very nice. So let's see here. We've got plain x on top and plain x on bottom. There's no x squareds or x cubes. The, the exponents are evenly matched. So that's gonna be a, in the long run, nobody's gonna win. The top and the bottom are gonna be evenly matched. So when I get to a billion minus three over a billion minus four, they're essentially the same. So this thing is heading towards one, that in the battle of top versus bottom, uh, they are evenly matched. And so then that's gonna be basically the same thing over the same thing, which is heading towards one. So that means I'm gonna have a horizontal asymptote at one. And I can see by the fact that I need to connect these dots that this one is gonna head in there and creep up towards that asymptote. And this one is gonna be in there and head towards those two asymptotes. So hopefully that is all review. Let's make sure that we summarize those, uh, those rules that we just used here. So when the top equals uh, zero, that is going to be a x-intercept. Um, when the bottom equals uh, zero, that's going to be a vertical asymptote. Um, I, I didn't list it as one of the points, but it's pretty helpful to find a y-intercept is what happens when x equals zero. That's usually a useful way to get a, the, the next easiest point. And then here's the complicated part that in the battle of the exponents, who wins? If the, if the top wins, if the top has got a higher degree polynomial, let's practice our technical language, then it will tend off towards uh, infinity. 
in the long run, if the top of your fraction wins, then you're going to tend off towards infinity. The, the number is just going to grow in the long run. The top is growing faster than the bottom. That's going to tend off towards infinity or negative infinity. But if they're evenly matched, then you need to look at their coefficients. You need to look and see who's got, um, if, if, if they're, you're basically ignorable that if they have x squared on top and x squared on bottom is the highest degree, then you need to look at their coefficients. And I'll do an example of that in just a second. And then if the bottom wins, what happens when a fraction is growing faster on the bottom than on the top? Well, that's going to tend off towards zero. Then you're going to have a vertical asymptote at, uh, at zero. So let's do um, an example of that. So. Let's see here. If we are given that f of x equals 3x squared plus 3x over x squared plus x minus 2. So this is why we practice all this factoring and solving of polynomials is that since we need to know when these things equal 0, we need to be able to solve the top and the bottom polynomial. And this is usually going to be a great deal of factoring that you have to do to be able to tell what's going on. So that's the same. I can take out a 3x and be left with x plus 1. And if I take out, mm, let's see here, what multiplies to negative 2 and adds to positive 1? x plus 2 and x minus 1. All right, so nothing canceled there. That's pretty straightforward. And now we can say our easy questions. When does the top equal zero? Well, the top equals zero at zero and at negative one. When does the bottom equal zero? Well, the bottom equals zero at positive one, so there's one vertical asymptote, and at negative two, so there's another vertical asymptote. And what happens if I plug in zero? Well, plugging in zero is most easily done in the original function, not the factored form, typically. So that's going to be zero. So that's the point that I already have, zero, zero. That didn't help me. But now, as I look at this, and I look again at the original function, and I say, who's going to win? Well, the top has got an x squared, and so does the bottom. So there's that case that I was talking about where it is evenly matched. So then we look at the coefficients, that in the long run, nothing is going to grow as fast as the x squared. The x or the 3x, those aren't going to grow as quickly in the long run as the x squared. So ultimately, in the long run, what we're looking at here is 3x squared over x squared, which is basically 3 over 1. So in the long run, this is going to tend towards 3. So that means that we've got to have a horizontal asymptote at 3. All right, so now when I try to think about how this is going to work, I've got to think, all right, what happens when I plug in a positive number? If I plug in a large positive number, do I go down here or do I go up here? Well, a big positive number on top and a big positive number on bottom, there's no negatives. So in the long run, to the far right, this is going to end up positive. So I can't be down here. That doesn't make any sense. I've got to be up here. And if I'm up there, then I'm doing that. And now, because this is a regular asymptote where we need to swoosh one up and one down, this has got to go down there. And let's see here. So if I plug in negatives, Squaring on top and squaring on bottom, ultimately large negatives are going to be positive as well. So that's going to be up here as well. And so if I need to do the opposite there, and then connect the dots like that. All right, so there's an example of the top and the bottom being evenly matched. Last example, here is one we're going to do, I haven't done about the bottom being of greater degree than the top. I'm going to save the top being bigger than the bottom for another day because that makes crazy asymptotes, which we need to leave for another lecture. But for now, last one, let's do f of x equals 4x plus 8 over x squared minus 2x minus 8. So that's 
needing to be factored, so I can take out a 4 on top and get x plus 2. And on the bottom, what multiplies to 8, negative 8, and adds to negative 2? That's going to be negative 4 and positive 2. <gasps> they have something in common. They have a moment when the top and the bottom will both make a 0. What does that do? Hopefully you've seen that before. If not, when you've got a factor that cancels, factor that cancels, that makes a hole. That makes a gap in your function, part where it's undefined. Zero over zero is undefined. So we can, we can cancel it as far as how do we graph it. It's very easy to graph, but we just have to remember to go back and make a hole at uh, if we attempt to plug in negative 2, that'll make a hole. So what we're really just going to graph and then add a hole is... Can you add nothing? Um, is we're going we're gonna to graph that. So uh, when does the top equal 0? Never. When does the bottom equal 0 at positive 4? So that's going to get us a vertical asymptote at 4. Who wins, the top or the bottom? Well, the bottom has x's and the top doesn't. The top is constant, the bottom is linear. So that means that we're ultimately going to head towards 0, have an asymptote at 0. And let's think about it. Plugging in big positive numbers greater than 4 will stay positive. So that's going to go like that. And I know, I'm just going to erase it here, I know I need to have something like that, but I need to figure out um, where this hole at negative 2 is. So if I try to plug in negative 2 into the original function, that won't work. I'll get 0 over 0. But if I plug in negative 2 over here, and I say negative 2 like that, that's 4 over negative 6, which simplifies to negative 2 thirds, then that tells me where the hole is uh, at negative 2. So at negative 2, 1, 2, I need to be right there at negative 2 thirds. And so now I can see, oh, and I might care about that uh, y-intercept, that if I uh, plug in x equals 0, I'm at negative 1. There's a nice point. So, uh, yeah, so now I can connect the dots that way and swoosh like that. So there's, broadly speaking, a useful graph uh, like that. So. We've talked about how you test the top for x-intercepts, the bottom for y, for uh, at vertical asymptotes. You plug in zero, gets you the y-intercept. You compare top and bottom, and if the top wins, it tends towards infinity. If they're evenly matched, you look at coefficients. If the bottom wins, it's tending towards zero in the long run. And if you ever get a factor that cancels top and bottom, that makes a hole. And then the equation looks like the canceled version of, we take out the factor that cancels, but it's got a hole where that original term was that canceled top and bottom. So we'll discuss more about crazy asymptotes next time. Until then, see you later.